welcome inside the WOSN studios. It's that time again. Mark Miller's here. I'm Matt Finkel. It's time for another edition of Mark's Madness. Playoff edition rolls along. We've got 10 area teams left. Let's start That's with the great. big schools, yep. work our way to the small ones, and right. break it all down. Sounds good. Division 3, Region 10, Wapakoneta. 28-7 victory over Tippy Canoe at Sydney, mm -hmm. and a good win for the Redskins. That was a real good win for them. You know, the, the, their method, at least this season and especially into the playoffs, is win with defense and take care of the ball on offense. You know, they've got enough players. They're not real fancy. They don't throw for a million yards. They don't have a 1,500-yard rusher like a lot of teams now. They just win by playing as a team, and their defense is just suffocating. It's re just really good. Continues to dominate. They had a big pick six in this game mm -hmm. that kind of put them over the edge, gave them a 14-point lead. I think it was 14-7 yep. at the time, late in the third quarter, yep. made it 21-7. And then from there, you know, the, when, you're, when you get seven points on Wapak's defense, that feels like a lot. Right. If they throw 21 on you, yeah. you know, forget it. Yeah, you think it's over. Now, they're up against it this week. Trotwood Madison was last year's runner-up in this division, but the whole town has rallied around this team. 3,500 people went to last week's game. They're expecting more this week. So, that, you know, pretty much the whole town of Wapak's going. Very exciting. This is their yeah. deepest playoff, oh, yeah. their first appearance in a regional final. Mm -hmm. And it'll be played at Sydney, which is, that's where they played the regional semifinal. It'll be an easy trip and a great right. field for them. The question I wanted to ask you is, does it make a difference playing a neutral site back-to-back -back weeks, the I same so. site? I think so. Minster's going to do the same thing at Piqua. And, you know, you're familiar. You've been in that locker room. You know what to expect. You know, your eyes aren't all glowing because you've never been there before. I think it's an advantage. Nothing like playing at home. Yeah. But, yeah, you get used to a but field. It does a add bit. a little bit sure. to the neutral. We you're, hope so. You're playing at neutral <laughs> sites, but maybe not yeah. in, like you're used to it. And I know a lot of That's teams right. will have that opportunity yeah. this week. And I think yeah. that maybe is something that the OHSA tries to schedule. But it was just mm -hmm. something I wanted to get your opinion yeah. on coming from a I, I would coach. feel much more comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. All right, so that's a big one, Troutwood Madison mm -hmm. on Friday night. How about Region 12 in Division 4? Kenton, mm -hmm. another WBL team, or mm -hmm. two WBL teams that are making a deep Still pro season yeah. run here. Yeah. They defeated Triway 13-6. to Triway mm -hmm. was the top seed in that mm -hmm. region, and this was a defensive battle, which is mm -hmm. not something we expected. Yeah, how about that? And lots of turnovers. You know, Kenton throws five turnovers. I think all in the first half. Yep. How good is your defense to keep you in it when you're giving them, giving them the ball five times? Well, they got some interceptions off the other guy, and the other guy had phenomenal stats. You, you're talking about Maddie and Ben Mock kind of stats at right. Kenton down through the years, and they, they keep him out of the end zone, give him lots of yards, that's okay, keep him out of the end zone, get some picks, and they won that thing with defense. Right, just to quantify what Kenton shut down, Parker Carmichael is the quarterback you're referring to. He had thrown for over 4,100 yards and 54 touchdowns entering Friday night's contest. Threw 78 times in the loss, <laughs> still racked up 383 yards. But you mentioned the three interceptions yeah. and Kenton's yep. defense. The big big number is six because that's yeah. what they held him to on the scoreboard, yeah. and it helped mm -hmm. Brent Fackler and company get the win. That's right, and Kenton's fans are saying 78 passes. We've seen that before. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're used to that. You know, and you have to keep coming back. Those two losses that Kenton have, those teams are still in it. Wapak and Coldwater. Pretty That's amazing. their two losses. Yeah. They're still in it, and they could go a lot further. Kenton's a good football team. So mm -hmm. 10 in a row for Kenton. And Trent Heights, the sophomore quarterback, he settled in real nicely. Yeah. Over 3,000 yards passing, 29 touchdowns on the season. Mm -hmm. And you got to like to see that when they were a little unsure what they had at quarterback coming you, into the season. Yeah, and you know what impresses me about this, and credit the coaches too. He had what was a nightmare first half. half. You know, you throw that many interceptions, you're feeling like I am really letting my guys down. He righted the ship, played clean the second half, and they win the football game. That is maturity. He's a young kid, but he really matured that day. A lot of great experience as a mm -hmm. sophomore and yep. hoping to carry them past Wasion. Wasion, a, a formidable mm -hmm. opponent, but a yeah. trip to the state semis on the line. So. That's right. And, and anytime you're 12 and 0, you're good. And they do play some good teams, but I'm not sure top to bottom it's as good as what Kenton's played. You know. Walk, right. walk in, right. and uh, in terms, walk. right, yeah. and all the rest of WBL. Right. Kenton mm -hmm. could just as easily have a zero in their loss That's column right. had their opponents been a little different. But, right. of course, we'll see how that one plays out. Let's move mm -hmm. to Division 5 now, Region 16. And this mm -hmm. region, when we started talking about it, it was very exciting mm -hmm. in the beginning because we saw Liberty Benton Coldwater as a possible uh -huh. regional final. And, and it happened. Guess what? Yeah, yeah. We got it. And, and it's right down the road at Spartan Stadium. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Th this really should be a great game. You know, they, they both had easy victories last week. Well, I'll say big point differentials. I'm not sure how easy it was because I think Marion Pleasant was pretty good and Liberty Benton got them. Um, but you know, their great players are playing great. That's what you need at this time of year. Even though they're banged up a little bit, they're healthy enough to play. 
you know, you know, you mentioned Austin Combs from Liberty Benton being banged up, and Brody Hoying did the tweak the ankle, but they both had very, very successful games, scored lots of touchdowns. They'll be ready to go. They both had four rushing touchdowns in the victory. Mm -hmm. Brody Hoying also added another one through the air. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just you know, playing through the pain. Brody Hoying was injured in the game and came to the sideline, got his ankle taped up, and. And again, Coldwater defeats Huron for the second year in a row in the postseason, ends Huron's season. Mm -hmm. And that game, the final was 42-14. Mm -hmm. And remember, they beat him 60-13 last year. And just for Liberty Benton, 51-20 over Marion Pleasant, that was a battle of two undefeated teams. Yeah. So yeah. Liberty Benton really showing what they've got here, blowing, right. running clock against an undefeated team. Yeah, and Marion Pleasant's been good for quite a while. I mean, they make the playoffs about every year so. Good victories, good teams, and now they play each other. So who do you got? Oh, man. I didn't want to ask you, that's but i got to ask one. you. Hey, that's a tough one. Now, you know, I'm a homer a little bit. Chip Otten's my man. Okay. You know, I coached him in Bowling Green, and i got to go, you know, i got to root for Chip. Right okay. For sure. Well, the defending state champs, yeah. and, and just Liberty Benton, when we, we visited Tim Nichols in the preseason for our warm-up show, he was like, well, our numbers are down. We're not really sure. Meanwhile, fast forward about three months, they haven't lost. <laughs> He's done a great job, and that talks about the program that he's instilled, not just a team that he coached last year. The program continues. Absolutely. So let's advance on to Region 20 now. We're up to uh, Division 6. Mm -hmm. We started with seven local teams in this region. We're down to one, and it's <laughs> top-seeded to Nora yeah. as they rolled over Spencerville 37 nothing. And, and they did it with turnovers. You know, Spencerville gave them five turnovers. And, uh, you know, you, you can't beat a quality team but with five turns. Really uncharacteristic for John Zerby's guys. They've been so good taking care of the ball. And I know a lot of that, you got to credit to Nora's defense, you know, or maybe the weather, cold, I don't know. But it just happened, you know. And they handled it with class like John Zerby's team all, always does. They'll come back next year. they got a lot of young players, you know. But they had a fabulous year. Tenor's good. I mean, they, without those five turnovers, that was going to be a tough win. Yeah, absolutely, without a yeah. doubt. And Tenora kind of did it Spencerville's way, or you mm. would expect the way Spencerville would have won, and that's on the ground. Yeah. Tenora racked up 228 yards yeah. rushing and three rushing touchdowns. Yeah. So. yeah, that's their thing. You know, that's what they'll do. And Winford likes to run it too. So over on the, the turf at Dyer Robertson. Yeah, it's going to be gonna fun. Be banging heads. Winford earns their spot in the regional finals after defeating Van Buren. Great mm -hmm. season for the Knights. Yeah, man, really a good run. Got a playoff victory, and the whole town was lit up. Good for those guys. Now they'll move on into basketball, and you'll see that success carry over, I think. Absolutely. This was a close game, though. It was 12-7 at the half, mm -hmm. and the uh, there was a fake punt in there. A squib kick was recovered by the Winford Eagles. So a couple bounces, maybe. You yeah. never know. It doesn't take much in these kind of games yeah. against good teams, and that's where we're at. We have all good teams right. now. Winford is a good program, though, and that'll be a, a good matchup between Tenora yeah. and Winford. Travis Moyer's old school. He set them up over there, and they continue to win. Tenora undefeated at 12-0. and Winford has won 11-0. You know who their only loss is to? <laughs> Liberty Benton. Right, week one. So they've <laughs> yeah. won 11 in a row. Yeah, and that's something. Yeah. Good. Speaks right. highly of Liberty Benton. And I was just going to say, great yeah. for our area, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. All right, so Region 22 now, a game you called. Mm -hmm. Minster defeated Versailles 45-19. Versailles put up 19 points against Minster in week five, fell short. 19 mm -hmm. points in the postseason, fell short. Yeah. And the Wildcats just stopped the run. Colin Peters uh -huh. lit up Miami East yeah. last yeah. in the regional quarterfinals. Uh -huh. And then Minster just shut him down pretty much. Yeah, they, they concentrate on him, obviously. He's a good back. Uh, he really had nothing at the beginning. Now, in the second half, he got a couple of creases, nothing big. But, uh, you know, got, a, got some yards. I don't know what he finished with, maybe 60 or something like that. But... Uh, you know, the, the thing was Josh Nixon. Right. He had a phenomenal Have game. He him. was throwing the ball so well. I, I was down on the field looking at him in warm-ups, and I thought, my gosh, this kid's got a great arm. I mean, a really good arm. He was able to get the deep ball out in front of him. He had able to have touch in the intermediate stuff. And when he would throw the out, there was no arc on the ball at all. He was throwing it on a line to the out. And, you know, he's got some good receivers. He's got big receivers. You know, we look at Wolf. There's another big one on the other side. I can't recall his name right now. But, yeah, Josh Nixon was very good. Three touchdown passes, two touchdown runs. And uh, they won it with the pass game that night. And that's something I think they'll need to have against West Liberty Salem. Yeah. At Piqua, you, you said they played there at Piqua. They'll be back yeah. at Piqua. Yep. So a little familiar in, uh -huh. in the south there. And, and then if Nixon can keep this up, like you said, yeah. I don't know if Minster can be stopped right now. Well, they're playing very well. You know, you look at that and they got three losses. Just remember who they played and what league they're in. And now they're playing in the, in the second season and they're really rolling. Division 7, Region 24, BVC rematch, mm -hmm. Arlington-Macomb. And this was a really interesting game in that 
Macomb came in with their quarterback already lost for the season. Mm-hmm. So they're starting their backup in Malachi Abbott. And then but early in the game, Arlington's quarterback goes down with an injury, mm-hmm. and Ridge Babb needs to mm-hmm. come in. And we're going to take a look at a couple plays from this game just to kind of show you the flow of the game. It was 7 nothing Arlington late in the second quarter. Ridge Babb comes into the game and does this. Well, it's, it's an out and up. It's a double move, and the corner bid on it. And uh, Babb laid it up, got a big score. That's huge. Here you're going to see it again. Good protection up front. Little arm fake. That was the out. That's, he, he wanted him to think I'm going to throw the out. It obviously worked. And uh, Aaron Starr on the receiving end of that. Ensuing kickoff, leading 13-0 now after a missed extra point, and they onside. Yep, Grant Heaster, the kicker. A lot of times you see him dribble it, and then the kicker goes and recovers it. He pushes it off to the right. And the Macomb player had first shot at it, but could not control it. So that sets up the very next play, Ridge Babb running to his left, and look out. That's a great run. You know, very athletic. You bring in a backup quarterback, sometimes they play other positions. Uh, I don't know a lot about him, but I'd say he'd be playing somewhere else on my team because he's pretty good. If he's running like that, I hope so. Yeah, look at this. Cuts up inside. Good job by 73, kicking out the contain. And then some broken tackles there and enough speed to outrun the DBs. Got a personal escort there. 33's peeling back, making sure he gets in untouched. Great run. Tremendous run. So from going up 7 nothing, about four minutes left in the second quarter, 11 seconds later, it's a 20 nothing game. And then from there, it was a little tough for McComb to come back and, and Arlington advances on. But a, a really interesting game there. Yeah. Played at Finley Donnell Stadium, and that's where Arlington will meet Grove, uh-huh. who defeated Tiffin Calvert in a 17-7 game that I can tell you I think was a little more lopsided than that score uh-huh. reflects. These are two teams on a roll. You know, they're playing really well. They have great confidence. They're pretty healthy. You know, you talked about the starter getting up. That kid played well. Maybe he's starting this week. Yeah. You never know. But, but Grove, you know, that, that win over Calvert, as you mentioned, pretty dominant. And, uh, boy, when kids start to believe in themselves and to believe in their teammates, you know, you can go a lot of places that you didn't think you'd get to a few weeks ago or especially at the beginning of the year. I know they're 8-4, and four, but those are some of them were pretty quality losses. They're a good football team. Joey Warnicke's running the ball really well. Running Coach extremely Schaefer. extremely well. On the sports report, that one highlighted him. I don't know how many tackles he broke and then just outran people. He, he, that was a big-time run. Yeah, Coach Schaefer's got him playing well. We'll have to yep. see if Arlington Dominic Fuller is back or Ridge Babb is starting. Either way, they got to feel confident heading into that matchup That's with Grove. the next man up thing. You know, this time of year, everybody's got somebody hurt, right. you know. So let's finish out with... Division 7, Region 26 now, Marion Local, too much for Fort Recovery. You were there, yep. and now Marion Local, we know they win a lot. How about four straight shutouts, <laughs> outscoring their opponents 173 to nothing mm-hmm. in their last four games. But you know what the most impressive part of that statistic is? All four were playoff teams. Obviously, yeah. the two in the postseason yeah. and the two before that also happened to make it yeah, as well. Yeah, and that's something. Yeah. And that's something that you go into the playoffs, that's the best of the best. And they haven't let anybody cross the goal line yet. And, that, and they play their young kids a lot. Yeah. You know, that whole fourth quarter, uh, we were searching for names, you know, because they were all guys that we weren't. It's great experience yeah, for oh, these guys yeah. that are going to be there in the And they just years. go in and they, uh, talk about a program. They go in, they do the same thing the same way, and they play their hearts out. Not that Fort Recovery didn't. They played very hard, had some tough breaks go against them early, and it flipped it over to Marion Local's side, and then they just couldn't get in the end zone. But, uh, that, yeah, really, Marion Local is yet to be challenged on the scoreboard. Fort Recovery, tremendous season. Another one who had made their mm-hmm. first playoff appearance in school history, got the win. And I know that Tim Goodwin was a little worried about this team. Yes, he was. And, yeah. you know, Marion Local I, I think came he out mentioned on top. You. He had, had visions of Cole Hall running down <laughs> yeah. the field, you know, right. and sc- scoring touchdowns. And, and Cole never quite got untracked. You know, they were, they were really keying on him and, and uh, winning. The receiver caught some but didn't, didn't catch any real, real big ones, you know. So a great victory for Marion Local. And now Sidney Lehman, who also had a shutout in their right. playoff game. Um, you know, any, anytime J.C. runs for four touchdowns, you know it's a good night. And that's what he had last week. That's right. For the Flyers, Nick Rourke had four total touchdowns. He's the quarterback for Lehman mm-hmm. Catholic. So that should be a good game yep. as well. They'll play that at Wapak on Saturday. And mm-hmm. a lot to look forward to again. As Marion Local, say, same back. Back to the same spot. Back to the same one. Mm-hmm. I think the OHSA mm-hmm. did a good job of that, even mm-hmm. though we're on neutral sites. You know, mm-hmm. not doesn't seem like the travel distances are too far this week. And a lot of mm-hmm. schools playing back at the school same venue that they played yeah. at the week before. So. Yeah, and Marion Local has always played a lot at, at Walpock because they play teams from the north, and that's a good meeting right. point. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, we say week after week, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and now yeah. it's getting, we're getting even more down to the nitty-gritty. That's right. We started with 224. We're down to 56. 56, that's and right. you told me earlier today that 
Six of the seven defending yeah. state champs are still yeah. in it, which That's is very right. interesting. Of the seven divisions, six made the playoffs. Only one, Cincinnati Loveland, did not make the playoffs. And all six of those are still in, thinking repeat, repeat, repeat. And we got Coldwater and Marion yeah. Division 5 and 7 around here. Yeah. So. We hope they repeat. Yeah, that could be very interesting. We'll see. We'll, we'll have you covered all weekend long. Sports Report Friday at 10, Saturday at 10 as well for all your highlights. And here's a look at our rebroadcast schedule. Five games for you begin Saturday at 10 a.m. with Wasion versus Kenton. You can also catch that game Saturday evening at 7 p.m. if that's a better time for you. Saturday at noon, Trotwood Madison versus Wapakoneta, also replaying at 9. Saturday at 11 p.m., Liberty Benton, Coldwater. Sunday, doubleheader begins at 7, Columbus Grove versus Arlington from Donnell Stadium, followed by Sunday at 9, Lehman Catholic at Marion Local from Harmon Field. So, lot to look forward to, and we'll be back with you next week to break it all down on what is likely to be our final edition of Mark's Madness for the football season. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on WOSN.